Jenga, a current chair of the Medical and Dentist Council. I am a physician endocrinologist who has worked in several uh, public and private uh, um, uh, institutions. I have been a lecturer at the medical school in, in my yester years <laughs> and uh, now I do enjoy uh, the, the work that, that I'm doing now to regulate the training of our health professionals whom I taught at some point. The, the Medical Council uh, was uh, uh, appointed uh, according to the CAP 253 of the Health Act, which was uh, which came into force. The new one came into force last year, 2019, on the 17th of May, signed signed by uh, the President. And uh, the requirement is that all councils and boards uh, in the medical fraternity should be aligned with Mogozo, and this is what uh, the new council uh, was constituted uh, in reference to. And we, uh, we saw our, our, uh, our council, which was previously a board, reduced from a membership of 19 to the membership of the current uh, nine. And the representation of, the, of this council is quite uh, comprehensive and it is wide in such that it's not only made of uh, medical professionals, Yes, we have representation from uh, the, the medical fraternity, the uh, Kenya Medical Association, Kenya Dental Association, the uh, representative from the deans of the universities, and we have representation from finance, and then the Kenya Human Rights Commission, and the, uh, the Kenya private hospitals. For the first time, we have representation from the oral health uh, uh, practitioners, something that has never happened. It's a, it's, it's a smaller council, yes, but uh, with a uh, quite uh, wide uh, presentation from various sectors. We also have someone from the, the, uh, the Ministry of Health, from the Office of the Director General, and we have a representation from a finance, uh, someone with a finance background, mm -hmm. which makes us more, I, I would say, we, we, are, we are already really uh, Mm, equipped to work and to deliver our medicine. When you hear of medical and dental council, what do you think about? You think about a regulation of health of people, people. Not just it's not just an abstract. You need to have the 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 person you are uh, you are taking care of. That's the patient or other people who are unhealthy. They should be our center of interest. And when you have a, someone from the human rights uh, commission you're making sure that at no one time are you actually putting that at the back. It's always at the front. And this is why, uh, not just even in this medical council, well, whichever institution, organization that deals with health, we must always remember that we put our patients first. So I think that's very crucial for us. Now, um, this council was gazetted in January. Then we had an inauguration in February. Uh, where we also went through a bit of corporate governance by Mogozo. And the thing is, uh, our council is is uh, kind of led and uh, we look at, uh, we reference our strategic plan. We do have a strategic plan for the council. And this strategic plan has several pillars. And so I would like to actually just quickly highlight some of our pillars before we even talk about other things. And because that to me uh, is very critical, even as we look at any other things that we may be involved in doing. Mm -hmm. We have that this, the service delivery excellence pillar. And this is what w looks at effectiveness, efficiency, professionalism, and a world-class regulatory authority. That's what we hope to achieve, or that's what is we, our mandate, or the, that's what we aim to actualize, yeah? Then regulatory enforcement. We are aligned to other regulatory bodies as well, and we work together with other regulatory bodies to be able to achieve our mandate. And our strategic goal is to ensure quality health care uh, through regulating of training of our health professionals and registration, licensing, and then inspecting and uh, uh, the professional practice. So that is very key for this council. Whatever else we are given to do, this is really our primary mandate, uh, making sure that we deliver this 
Okay, then of course we have uh, we work under a legal framework. As I said earlier, we were appointed according to Cap 253. So we are aligned to the statutory uh, permissions granted to this council by that uh, Cap 253. And of course, we, we also are aligned to other relevant statutory uh, laws and policies and support the council's uh, legal mandate. There's something I would like to mention. The COVID hit us uh, as it hit the rest of the world. And again, this is also when the new council was just within one month of having been inaugurated. So honestly, there was no no thinking. They hit the ground running uh, into a tree support uh, the rest of the, the health sector in the, the COVID response. And it was in that light that the, the, the PS and the Minister of Health uh, directed that uh, the council becomes a center the Center for the Coordination of Quarantine and Isolation uh, uh, Activities and Facilities in this country. And if you remember very well, just around that time, uh, it was announced that people returning to the country would be uh, quarantined in facilities, mandatory, which I would prefer not to call it mandatory because it sounds kind of harsh, I say protective, protective uh, quarantine so that we can protect and the rest of us and even them and their families. So that, with that in mind, we were tasked to identify uh, uh, quarantine facilities, both government and private. And at the same time, start, we started working on isolation facilities and identifying uh, health facilities. But if you remember, and you can actually go back to our data, all the flights that came in uh, and we, all these people we uh, were uh, quarantined, they were all tested. We did find quite a number of these people were positive, and then we had to evacuate uh, with, together with the, the support of the Ministry of Health and the, the teams from the Ministry of Health. We evacuated most of the positive people to the health facilities. When we say luckily enough, most of them had mild or asymptomatic a disease, so a good, num good, good number of them recovered. But we remember even at that early stage, we still had some loss of, of life we had some people dying from COVID. From the start, when it was a pandemic that was hitting the world very heavily, so we didn't take it lightly. And I'm so happy that the act of uh, quarantine people, much as it, most people didn't seem to understand why this was going on, it actually did stop us getting uh, a huge uh, number of our people, especially in the counties and the communities. This is why we had a slow onset of community transmission. We would not be where we are now if we had not done that first uh, action of quarantine and isolation. It was still going to happen. We are still going to get community spirit, but it was delayed. Some people will say, why did you actually delay? What, what uh, benefit? I think those three months that whereby we had all this action of quarantine, isolation, we have all learned as a community how to actually uh, follow guidelines for, to prevent getting the, the, the virus. Universal health coverage is one of the big four agenda for the president in, for his exit in 2022. And I am glad and I really, because a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So if we take care of our people uh, from the health aspect, everything else will fall into place. Everything else. Universal health coverage meaning providing health care but without running the people you are you are you are you are treating into poverty at the moment and for quite a while health care delivery in this in this country is, has not been free even in the public facilities has not been free the government has tried to make it affordable but universal health coverage hopefully uh, with encompassing primary health care with the support of nhif i think that we can achieve it the president has given us the goodwill it is upon us, the rest of us, everybody else in the health sector, to make sure we actualize this. Take advantage of that goodwill. It is always good when the policymakers give you almost an avenue. We even almost given a deadline and timelines. Now, as the, the council, we are supporting the, the Ministry of Health and we're supporting the government in this. Even that universal health is quality health. It is affordable. It is reachable, it's accessible, so that when you go to the uh, level two, level three facilities, they do offer quality health. The, 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 the community health uh, rotation 
the family health. When we talk about family health medicine, we are talking about community health. Health is not just prescribing. What brings disease? The, uh, the, the, stress, the stresses in the community, the environment, the uh, supply of water, uh, the drainage, the sewage, everything. That's what creates disease in so many, uh, at so many levels. When you talk about ep epidemics like cholera, of course, it, you most likely will find uh, what can prevent it at that community level. So our interns now must, as a requirement, for them to be registered eventually, they must do that uh, uh, community uh, rotation. You know, like they, they do a rotation in, in the medical wards or in the medical departments, surgical, uh, mental health. One of the now requirements is community health rotation. This is our first lot that started this. I think it's going to be something that will impact and will enrich their experience as doctors. Uh, the Regulator of Health requires a very strong uh, workforce. We have the council members, we have the, the secretariat, we have the people who work there, the, the, the heads of department and their departments, uh, the composition of the departments. If we do not first take care of the, of the health of the workers within this council, then it will be a sham to say that we are regulating health. So I am very passionate that people within this council, we observe a healthy work, a working uh, environment, in that we, we try and look at the stress, the stressors and the stress factors. Uh, for the, my, the, the environment that we work in, in this council, I believe that this, uh, a healthy environment will increase the productivity. There's no such a thing as stress-free environment but help people cope with the stresses of every day-to-day -day life. And not just the fact that they appear to work every morning, even what happens after they go home. So it is important that we have a sector, and that's why we have uh, human resource, we have customer relations. Even, we are not only serving people outside, we should also serve ourselves. So we must find out how the people who are working here to serve others, how they are in their workplace and even at home. And this, to me, I think every uh, a, a corporate or public or private sector, if we address this, we would get a better output from the people who work within those organizations. This council is smaller, but uh, we have very committed and focused council members as well as the, the members of, the, of staff. We have already in, in, uh, improved accessibility of our services online. And this, to me, is so uh, crucial because registration, licensing, everything else, information is seamless. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody is becoming IT savvy in Kenya, even on mobiles and on computers. So it is easy to, to get the information out there. And this is why communication uh, strategy for this council, to me, is very key. And it's one of the areas that I really want developed and strengthened. I think it's... Uh, how you communicate to others and even amongst yourselves tells our volumes about your organization. So if we start by doing it right, I think we are going to get it right all the way. But if you start on a wrong foot, we'll get it wrong all the way. So because what you communicate is what other people will perceive. We may be doing excellent work here, but if you don't communicate it out there, also even you may be having excellent services, but if people don't know how to access it, what good is it? So we need to make sure that people know, mm -hmm. and that's very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. One of the other things is, at, at least I know with what we have been able to do, the council engaging our stakeholders. We talk about we are regulating medical, dental uh, 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 professionals. We need to be in tandem with what they are doing also in the organization. We need to speak to each other, and it is through communication again. So our stakeholders to, uh, to me are very strong, uh, very important because they will strengthen and also contribute to how we, we uh, uh, perform our duties as well. You know we have uh, uh, four major committees in the council. We have the committee for uh, disciplinary and ethics. We have the one for uh, training and registration and human resource, licensing. We have the audit. When we are engaging, it is so easy to, or for us to know who really also has passion in making sure that we deliver our money. Staff to us is very important because one can't work with the, without the other. It's that kind of harmonization of how we work that will make us uh, succeed mm -hmm. and it will make our mandate a reality in the near future. Mm -hmm. And of course, 
uh, the, we have the uh, compliance department. We can back all we want about we want this uh, uh, level of health uh, health care delivery. We want this kind of facility, but we will go today to a facility, tell them this is what we need, and we leave and we come back and sit tight at the council. But how do we comply with the compliance officers on the ground? Are very key to making sure that what it is that we say it we don't just say it is done it is maintained and we have sustainability of us, uh, the facilities so I think it is important that we have all these factors because the council cannot work in uh, isolation it can't all these bodies and all these departments must work together in harmony for us to be able to do what it is we, we purpose uh, to do